and welcome to The Echo. I'm Dana Hilliard, Mayor of the City of Summersworth. And I'm Jenny Holmes, editor and founder of SummersworthNow.com. And we are standing in a place that is on the National Historical Registry. It is also the place of a final resting place of a lot of the founding fathers of the city of Summersworth, veterans dating all the way back to the American Revolution yep. uh, through modern day times, and is a great place of just a passive walk and reflection and some uh, real passive recreation. It's one of my favorite places to walk, and I can tell you, I'm up here a lot. There's an awful lot of people walk in this cemetery. And of course, where are we? We're in the Forest Glade Cemetery, and, and it is a, really a vast knowledge of uh, history and, and has a really cool story behind uh, what the design uh, I implicated, how this cemetery was designed, and, and just the history of it coming into fruition, and, and really what the future holds for this spot as we continue to expand as, as a community, and some of the vision uh, that the Cemetery Board of Trustees has for restoring some of the historical sites within here, and, and continuing the maintenance and upkeep. Yeah, it's a fascinating place. I mean, as a historian, I love it. I always say to people, every single tombstone in this place has a story. You just have to go and uncover it. So Jenny's going to help us uncover some of the stories of this place. And I know you're excited to get the story behind uh, the Forest Glade Cemetery as I am. So Jenny, without further ado, let's get to it. Thank you. Well, as you can see, we're in some Forest Glade, which as I said in the intro, is one of my favorite places to walk. And I know a lot of people in Summersworth walk here. You often see people with their dogs out. Um, one of the reasons I love it is because I'm a historian and all of the old, every tombstone tells a story. That's one of my favorite things about cemeteries is people often say, why do you like cemeteries, Jenny? One, they tell stories. Every, every single person in here has a story to tell. You just have to have the time and the energy to go and look for them. Um, sometimes I lack that energy, but that's okay. Um, this one here is actually, Ferber and Poor is actually, we were stood in front of the chapel for the opening and the chapel is dedicated to the person in this actual tomb, Mr. Ferber and Mr. P Miss Poor. Miss Poor is his, daughter. Ferber himself was very big in the um, Boston and Main Railway Company when we when that was huge over here. Um, he was very well known in the area which is why he's, one of the reasons he is from Somersworth he was buried in Somersworth and one of the things that that brings up is as part of the Somersworth Historical Society and Museum we're going to be doing a Voice, we, we haven't decided a name yet, but sometime this year we will be doing a tour of the cemetery where we'll have actors that will play all of these people that I'm kind of talking about today. And I'm pretty sure this gentleman will be one of them, or at least, the, or maybe his daughter. But at some, one point, this, this, the chapel that you see now was actually um, in very bad disrepair. I think it was about the 1980s. There was windows out, everything was out. It was put back together by um, a group of concerned citizens and they did an excellent job. And throughout the summer, you'll be able to come and look. Um, the cemetery trustees are doing four, a series of four Sunday afternoons. The first one is June the 10th. The rest of the dates are up on the website. You can see it on summersworth.com, you can see it there. Um, all various things. There's a string quartet. This will be the third year they've done it. There's um, one where we'll have, they, or they will have um, Peter, Ma Peter Mishu, who is also a historian, talking about this type of cemetery. This is a very different cemetery to what you see in, say, Mount Calvary or Holy Trinity. They're like the soldiers and sailors where they're set stones. These are designed that you roam around them and you just, you just take it all in, which is the great thing. I'm going to take you down the road now. We're going to go see one of, the, one of my favorite um, monuments, statues, mausoleums. This is one of my favorite places to actually stand in the cemetery because you can see so much of what the cemetery is about. But this is the Burroughs Mausoleum which is absolutely, this fascinates me. One, because of the story behind it, but two, it's just a beautiful piece of architecture. It's huge. To build that today, I don't know what that would cost. I don't even want to think about the cost. 
I don't even think that you could get the steps to be straight. And I'm pretty sure those steps are as straight today as they were when it was built. Um, but Mr. Burroughs was well known. Obviously, he lived in Chicago. For some reason, and I, why it escapes me, but he was buried in, um, obviously, he was interred in Forest Glade, came back home, was interred here. And one of the things in his will is that for six days, he had people actually stand outside these gates. Two people stood either side and guard the, guard the mausoleum after he was interred here. I'm assuming it was because he was scared that he may get up, but I'm not sure. I don't think this, this is haunted at all. I've never seen anything and I've been here a long time, a lot of times. Um, but it's just a beautiful piece of architecture and you can't build these anymore, which I think is kind of a shame really, but that's just me. Um, the other thing that we have here in, in this cemetery that we have that is unique to this cemetery is it is non-denominational. So the chapel, any of the, the um, chaplains or priests can come in and give a service, etc., etc., in the chapel. This is actually, it doesn't matter what persuasion, religious persuasion that you may have been, you can be buried here. We have two Jewish section, sections within the cemetery. It's just a fascinating place to just come and walk and explore and see what's here. And as I say, if you're interested, you know, there are um, a lot of stories to be told in this cemetery. You just have to go look for them. As so often happens in New England, it's now raining. So we're under a tree, but actually it's quite good to be under this tree. And if you come here in August, uh, not August, October the fall, these trees are old and they are absolutely gorgeous color wise. But this cemetery has been around since 1852. That was when it was first consecrated. And this headstone, which the trustees have told me will be repaired, um, is the first person that was ever in, interred in the cemetery. And that was J uh, John Straw. As I say, that was 1852 when it was first consecrated. This is a big difference between English and American cemeteries. In England, we do not walk on headstones, uh, on where someone will be interred. It's just an English thing, I think. I don't know. Um, but this one in particular, can you see the iconography on this one? There's a lot of sim symbols. Um, there's a dove, so the dove, which is a symbol of peace. There's the Masonic sign. You'll see a lot of Masonic signs in the cemetery itself on different headstones. But every headstone in here probably has a very different re meaning. There's books written on the subject. I'm just beginning to explore it. It fascinates me. Um, but there's a lot of different things. Like you'll see some that some with broken headstones, they're deliberately made that way. And they're made that way to symbolize a life broken. You'll see um, lambs, they're normally young kids, babies. That's what that symbolizes. Um, there's one right at the other end of the cemetery and this cemetery is 22 acres, so it's a pretty big cemetery. There's all kinds of different symbols, all kinds of ways to explore this cemetery. Some people just like to walk through it on a nice spring day when it's not raining, which would be nice right now, but that's the way life is, I guess. Like Mark Twain says, wait five minutes and it will probably change all over again, but that's okay. Um, as I say, this is 22 acres. This is actually a bigger cemetery than um, Pine Hill and Dover, I believe. If I remember, if my memory serves me correctly, which I think it does. And it's just a fascinating place to come Beautiful in the fall, beautiful in the spring. I actually like it in the winter. It's very different every season. It's that atypical, takes on a different look every time you come here, you see something new. So there are some monuments in here that look absolutely pristine. 
then it's not because they've been cleaned, it's not because someone takes care of them particularly well. They were designed that way. They're made of zinc, I believe it's zinc alloy. And if you go up and you tap them, which I don't suggest you do, but if you do, you can tell they're metal. And they absolutely look as pristine the day today as they did the day that um, they were put in. And they were designed that way, but there was a problem with them, as is always the way. They, uh, they actually began to split, so they were discontinued in use. And I don't really know why, because they really do work well. But there's a lot of different um, materials used in these cemeteries too. It's granite, it's marble, it's the zinc alloy, it's all kinds of different things. So to be able to clean it up, you need to have special knowledge. Same as with the trees, people say, oh yeah, this tree may be dead. Well, to take that tree down, you have to bear in mind that there are also bodies in the cemetery, which is, you know, it's a cemetery, so there's going to be bodies in the cemetery, funnily enough. Um, but, so it's all things, it's not as easy as people think it is sometimes to just, oh, just go take that dead tree down. Well, yeah, but if we take the roots out, what are we going to do to this other, what are we going to disturb underneath? We can go in the well house too. The what? The well house. Oh, is that, uh, is that open? Oh, that, this right here? Yep. Just don't fall in it. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, as so often happens when you're out in New England in the spring, we are now in the middle of a, a storm. Well, it's not really a storm, but some rain. So we came into the well house and the well house I'm told it's going to be redone and repainted. Obviously, this is where they would draw the water um, for everything. I don't know a lot about the history of this well, I'll be honest with you, well house. There are actually others in the cemetery. Um, this one's obviously been capped off, so you can't fall down it. No big deal, which is probably just as well, because I'm clumsy, but... Um, this actually gives you a really nice, kind of a 360 view of the, what a, um, what Forest Glade Cemetery looks like without actually having to get wet, which is really good. But I was going to tell you about this one in front of me. Um, it says often on the front, sorry, on this side, on the back side, at the front it says pray. And Eleanor Prey, some of you may remember that the Russians came to town um, about two years ago, I believe. Um, there is a, we have a big connection with Bloody Vostok. And it's because of that lady, Eleanor Prey. Um, she married someone from Berwick and they went to, they ran a store in Vladivostok, which is in Russia, for 26, 27 years. And she was sending letters home. Those letters have been rediscovered by um, a professor over in Washington. He's written books and it's just a fascinating story. Um, if you look up Eleanor Prey, you'll find that we, there's actually a museum dedicated to that lady in Vladivostok in Russia. It's a fascinating story because those letters portrayed what it was like to be a normal, a, a normal, whatever normal is, but a, a, just someone living through the Russian Revolution, which in and of itself is fascinating. Um, and there's very few uh, documents that describe that, that experience. There's also many other, as you can see, I mean, it goes for as far as the eye will stretch. Um, many other people, our founding fathers, the people that founded Summersworth, are buried in the cemetery. And from that point of view, it's just fascinating. As I say, there's a story to be told, I have a story that I'm actually telling about one of the people in, um, in this row that was a banker, who was actually a um, clerk, cashier, and he was murdered in 1897 and it became the murder of the century. That is the actual title of, uh, in the um, Fosters of the time, it says murder of the century. Um, I'm writing a book about that, you can read about it at some point. 
I've still got to finish the book when I finish doing all the filming for everything else and everything else that we do. Um, but yeah, it's just a fascinating cemetery and obviously it goes back, as I say, 1852. There are all kinds of stories to be told in this cemetery and I hope that you will take the time to come up and enjoy this cemetery the same as many other people do. Even just to walk through the cemetery at any time of the year is a fascinating experience. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Echo. I'm Dana Hilliard, Mayor of the City of Summersworth. And I'm Jenny Holmes, founder and editor of SummersworthThenAndNow.com. And we look forward to seeing you on future episodes as we continue to explore all of the vast wealth and knowledge and cool places in our fine hilltop city. Until then, be safe.